Hey, hey, okay. This will probably be a, a pretty quick lecture, but um, I, I just want to kind of take something you, you learned about in the textbook. So they're talking about in the context of learning, um, how much that learning generalizes to other objects um, and, and w at what point the animal can sort of discriminate between two different things. Um, the way the textbook describes it, it's all fine, I think. It, it all makes sense. But I really felt like uh, an example from developmental psychology could help you to really understand the importance of that process, the process of either generalizing or discriminating, um, as the case may be. Uh, so let's let's sort of launch into that. And, you know, it's this is going to be a one slide um, lecture, but that's OK. So I am going to talk about this in the context of the work of a guy named Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget was perhaps the first or at least the first very well-known developmental psychologist who spent a lot of time and, and educational psychologist quite honestly he spent a lot of time thinking about the processes that a child goes through when they develop and you know how to best create a sort of school system that would uh, optimally help this child reach their full potential um, so, you know, as an educational psychologist, he's he's one of one of my heroes. We would call him hero. I I, I guess so. Um, although maybe Vygotsky a little bit more in in my case. For those of you who are Vygotsky heads, if you're not, don't worry about it. Uh, but we're going to talk about Piaget here, and we're going to talk about uh, this distinction he made between accommodation versus assimilation. And you'll see that this connects with generalization and discrimination as we go through. So it's just a, it's a story. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story, but I think that story again will really highlight um, the, the challenges that a child faces when it tries to get to know the world. Okay, so here's the story. The story starts like this. Let's say we have a child somewhere. And um, this child maybe spent most of their time in, in their home where there are no cats. You're going to see cats are going to play a role here. Um, and so they're going out into the world. Maybe they're going with their parents to visit other friends and stuff. And occasionally they're going to run into cats. Uh, and so the question is, how does the child learn about cats? And the story would go somewhere like this. The first time the child encounters something, maybe it's this that it encounters. And we're going to assume for a while, for this, for this example, we're going to assume all cats are nice. <laughs> okay? No mean cats in this example. Um, I know that may not be a reasonable assumption, but that's what we're going to assume for here. So all cats are nice. So um, the owner of this cat says, hey, go on over and, and, you know, scruff his head, scratch him behind the ears, and he might purr for you. And, yep, the kid goes over, scratches his head a little bit, and the, and the cat cuddles in and purrs, and the, and the child has a great time, really enjoys this interaction with the cat. Okay, cool. A little while later, in some other place, it meets this. Okay, so notice that this looks quite a bit like that other cat, but it also looks different in a number of ways, right? It is not an exact copy. It's got a very different fur, a very different sort of paint job, if you will. Um, and, you know, maybe it's a slightly different size. Its tail looks a little different than the other one's tail. So there's a number of, you know, specific differences, but overall it looks pretty similar. And the notion is what the child will do um, initially is, is something called assimilation. It will, it's formed sort of a category here of something it called cat. And now that it sees this one, it's going to assimilate it into that category as its first assumption. And so what that means is it's generalizing, it's learning. What did it learn from this? Well, it learned a sort of behavior that it can engage. When I see one of those, if I engage with this behavior of scruffing its head and such, then I could get positively rewarded for doing that. And so when it sees this cat, it assimilates it. It says, you know, it looks a little different, but I think it's the same kind of thing. And so I'm going to generalize my learning and I'm going to behave the same way towards this cat as I did towards that one. And so I'll go scratch his ears and pet his head. And, and let's say the, the child does and the cat likes it and it purrs and it cuddles up and it's a beautiful experience. Excellent. Okay. A little while later the child encounters this. Again, 
similar in many regards, um, different in, in some ways um, in terms of specific features and colors and stuff like that, a little different. But the claim is, again, it looks a heck of a lot like that thing that I've been thinking of as a cat. I think this might be another cat. And so I'm going to assimilate this into my category. So this category is now becoming sort of a much more general category of cats, right? It was at first dominated by this one, but now we've brought all three of these into the category. And again, now the child can behave to this in the same way. So it can generalize its learning, scratch its head, get the positive outcome. So first of all, this is the importance of generalization, right? It lets you take learning that you experienced in one context and then apply that learning to other contexts that are similar enough. And if they're similar enough now, we can expand that learning, generalize that learning. And so that really helps us to, you know, very quickly know, oh, we run into some new thing that we've never seen before, but we don't just go, oh, I don't know how to act because there's a new thing there. We say, no, 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 I think that thing was like those other things and I'm going to act it like I did towards them. And everything usually works out fine. Now, there are situations, though, where it doesn't work out fine. So let's say we have our child. They're exploring their world. Um, I don't know. Maybe now they're in a walk in the woods. You're taking the child in a walk in the woods, and that child sees this. Okay. If any of you don't know what this is, this is not a cat. It is a skunk. It looks like a cat. You know, again, different paint job, but when you kind of look at it, it's it's very similar in many ways. Tail, four legs, little head at the top, roughly same body size. Um, and so the child, not knowing any better, their first reaction will be to assimilate this into the cat family. It'll say, well, that sure looks like a cat. I assume that's a cat. I'm going to behave towards it like it's a cat. So once again, it's going to generalize its learning go over well okay does it go over so critically now um, an important question is what's the parent doing uh, if the parent is distracted let's let's do that scenario first parents distracted so maybe the child will indeed start approaching this animal as if it wants to scratch his head and what will happen if it does well, it won't purr and cuddle in. No, it'll probably turn around, lift its tail, and spray the kid with some horrible smelling skunk juice, uh, which will stay on that kid for a long, long time. And so basically what happened? Well, the child assimilated that into the cat group, behaved like it was towards it, like it was a cat, and then suddenly found out, oh no, <laughs> there's very different consequences for one of these. This is not a cat. Um, and so what it has to learn is it has to accommodate this new information. And what Piaget meant by that is it has to create a new category. It has to say, okay, these three things belong in a category, but this is something else entirely. I'm going to create a new category for that sort of thing because I have to behave differently towards those than this. So generalization, you know, helps us kind of um, use our learning and, and help it guide our behaviors across a bunch of situations. But we have to learn which situations fit with our previous learning and which don't. And the ones that don't, we have to very quickly discriminate those from these. We have to say, we have to figure out how this is different from that, you know, visually when I recognize it, I want to recognize that this is not a cat. And so that's the role that discrimination plays. Every now and then, stimuli in the world that look similar do not respond similarly to us or, or to our actions. And so we really have to learn, you know, which stimuli go together and which do not. Generalization helps us kind of bring stimuli together. Um, discrimination helps us find those categories where we say, oh, no, 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 this is something different. And so those processes are really critical to our learning and our effective interaction with the world. Okay, cool. So again, the hope was just that this helps you understand the importance of generalization and discrimination. So as you then now read more about it in the textbook, um, you'll get a sense of why people would be doing experiments on this and, and you know how it's important. Cool. Leave it there. Bye-bye.